Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're tuning in today. Uh, we're supposed to have a little bit of a cool off. I'm, I have mixed feelings about that. I was enjoying the warm weather. It was nice. Well, uh, we're getting closer and closer to launching a small group program. More information coming. We're gathering information for facilitators and uh we're going to have more information about locations of these small groups and what the goals of them are and things like that. Good morning, Todd. Um, so small groups, more information is coming down the pipeline quickly. Um, but there, there's a few things I have to get figured out first uh, before I launch it to you. The only reason that I'm sharing it is because it's been exciting that we've talked about this for quite a long time. So Good morning, Bev. Good morning, June. Uh, it's great to have you guys online with us today. It just it feels fun. It feels like a community to know like that that we're all gathered around the word at the same time, um, even though we're not physically in the same place. Uh, so let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Uh, you, you might remember that very recently, we had a text where the theme for the chapter was watch and pray. And, and in a different context, Paul brings up this same kind of topic. Paul puts great value on prayer for others in support of the proclamation of the gospel. So he, all of his letters contain some kind of request for prayer and support of missional work. Ephesians 6 has it. Second Thessalonians 3 has it. So Paul's example gives us a guide to help others proclaim the gospel uh, and, and to not neglect to pray. Uh, we're going to get this in two weeks with our epistle text from 1 Peter 3, and I'm going to be preaching on that. But here, Paul's requests... Also, his, his request puts a high value on the efforts of those who offer such prayers, and it indicates that they should not look down on those whose contributions to uh, the mission of the church is less. Pray for missions. Pray for the sharing of the gospel. Uh, in, in his direct to his readers... He says it's in, in another place in this book, he says, in order to know how it is necessary for you to answer each one of those requests. The, the apostle turns more directly to the Christian witness as he talks about how we are to move forward. Uh, now, this is the book of Ephesians, uh, of Colossians, but in Ephesians, there follows this famous section on uh, the Christian as they're uh, engaging in this army-like activity. But he, here he's referencing something quite similar. There's this unseen enemy, and you got to have armor. Uh, the ladies' Bible study right now is studying the armor of God, Ephesians 6. And so in Ephesians... He gives this uh, this famous section on the Christian hoplite, the, the, the Christian armed soldier of ancient Greece. But that's what he means when he says, be watchful. There's constant battles happening around you and you are only aware of them uh, by scripture telling you these realities are there. And that's where prayer becomes a far more important tool than you may think. Uh, if, if you were to read 
some of these books up here from Martin Luther as he's talking on various topics of scripture. He was keenly aware of the devil's attempts to persuade and distract. And there's a, a friend of mine went to Germany recently and at one of the tour stops in Wittenberg, you go into the castle and there's this section, this corner of this room that's roped off. And, and, he, and he's like, what, what the heck is this? It's just an empty corner of a room. And in the corner is where Luther allegedly took up his ink well and threw it at the devil. And it hit the wall. And the ink is still there on the wall. No, it's just, it's a memorable story that he tells, that he tells in some of his writings that he was constantly in prayer because he knew that if he wasn't watching out, the devil would get into those toeholds of his life. And Paul, more than anyone outside of Jesus, engages us in this spiritual warfare conversation. Now, it's not explicitly in this exact verse, Colossians 4, verse 2, but that's the underlying concern Paul has, is that you're watchful and ready and prepared, and part of the process for doing that is steadfastness and prayer. Then let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, it's easy to become distracted in the world in which we live. We're, we're on Facebook right now. It's easy to scroll and go on to other things. It's easy to put down the Bible and pick up something else. And the devil uses those sneaky little things to grease the slippery slopes of sin in our lives. Lord, help us to be steadfast in prayer, finding every moment between activities to come to you, to be watchful, to ask for your encouragement, your comfort, your peace, and your strength. We ask these things for today, that your holy angel would be with us, that we would fall into no sin, and that we would sing the praises of your name all day long. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.